if you're coming to Puerto Rico, you'll probably land in San Juan Airport. You'll probably want to visit Old San Juan and one or more of Puerto Rico's excellent beaches. But what will you do when you arrive in the old city? What will you visit? What will you miss? And how about the beaches? How do you know which ones are the best and which you should avoid altogether? And more importantly, why? That's why I wrote the Old San Juan Walking Tour in Puerto Rico Beach by Beach, the ultimate guides to Puerto Rico's most beautiful city and most wonderful beaches. But I'm not going to tell you all about them now because that's not why you're here. Just visit the links on screen and find out all about them. Today, we visit the beautiful town of Corozal in the central north mountainous region of Puerto Rico. We visit the lovely Sacred Family Parish, established in 1795 and rebuilt several times along the centuries. We also visit Franklin Delano Roosevelt Square, a beautiful plaza with a round seating area that sits across the street from City Hall. On the west side of the square, you have the Museo de la Barbería, or Barber's Museum. And on the south, Casa Loidí, or the Loidí House. Finally, we drove out to the countryside to see the wonderful Mavilla Bridge and experience the beautiful Montechoca State Park. All that and more in our next episode. Corozal is one of those towns that's a great place to visit on your way to somewhere else. And I'm not trying to be facetious. I said the same thing about Aguas Buenas and some people didn't appreciate it. But I'll probably say it again about other towns before this series is over. And the reason is obvious. Some places are just beautiful and simple. People live there and go about their business without magnificent buildings or wonders of nature. But that doesn't mean that they're not great places to visit. They just don't warrant an entire day. Corozal is one of those places. It's a small town located in the central eastern region of Puerto Rico. It's south of Vega Alta, southwest of Tua Alta, west of Naranjito, north of Barranquitas and Orocovis, and east of Morovis. The town was founded in 1795 and is one of the most densely populated in the area. Even the town's name screams country. It's named after a palm tree, the Palma de Corozo, or Grugru palm, to be exact. These palms are native to Puerto Rico and usually reach heights between 26 and 33 feet. Their fruit is a very hard seed, about an inch in diameter, that grows in bundles. When I was a child, we used to rub those seeds against the concrete sidewalk until we shaped them into a ring. Then we'd put them in coffee grounds until they turned jet black. Nowadays, Corozo rings are not as fashionable, but there are artisans that still make them as a source of income. The ride to Corozal took a little over an hour along Toll Road 22, a portion of Road Number 2, Expressway 142, and a segment of Municipal Road 159. When we arrived in Corozal, it was 7.45 on a bright Tuesday morning. To our surprise, the town was rather full to the point that we drove several times around the main square before finding a parking spot. As always, our first stop was at the beautiful Sacred Family Parish, established in 1795, the same year when the town was founded. Like other churches on the island founded during the Spanish colonial period, it has been remodeled several times during its history due to the hurricanes that periodically affect the island. Sacred Family Parish is by no means regal or pompous, 
but it does exude an air of elegance and beauty that comes from beautiful architecture and sheer simplicity. We visited Sacred Family Parish on the week before Holy Week. Thus, all the religious figures were covered in purple cloth. I grew up in the Baptist faith, so I know little about Catholic traditions. According to the deacon in charge of the temple, many Catholic churches cover their religious figures during the Lent or Quaresma period, which is the 40 days that precede Holy Week, and unveil them as the Holy Week starts. This is a tradition that goes back centuries and is still followed by some parishes. Another thing that I wasn't quite sure about was what to call the figures. Ephigias? Santos? Estatuas? In English that would be effigies? Saints? Or statues? To my surprise, there's no established name for them. The fact is that Catholics just call them by their names. Case in point, the only one uncovered was San Jose, or Saint Joseph in the King's English. And it was because it happened to be his week, so he had to be visible. In any case, the Sacred Family Parish is a beautiful temple that's well worth the visit. As we left the temple, we entered a beautiful square named after U.S. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. After the island of Puerto Rico became a U.S. territory back in 1898, many smaller towns named their town squares and other monuments after prominent U.S. figures. Many of those places have since been renamed after local figures, but not the square in Corozal. As for the square itself, it's clean and free of graffiti. That's always a good thing. It also has adequate tree cover and abundant benches for people watching. However, the one thing it's missing are the water fountains. I mean, they're there, but they weren't working. Across the square is the original city hall building where we always stop to ask for local information. The gentleman there was quite helpful, although he mostly told us about the places that weren't available. For example, there's a small barbershop museum next to the parish that has been closed for a very long time. The young man's words, not mine. On the south side of the parish, there's another wooden structure called Casa Loidi, which at this point is mostly an empty building. So basically, after seeing the parish, the square, and city hall, we were done with the town center of Corozal, and it was only 8.41. There was a bridge on the northeast of town that I wanted to visit. It's called the Mavilla Bridge and it was built in 1903. It's a one-lane bridge on kilometer 17.7 of road 159 that has retained its original design and structure for over a century. So we decided to go for a ride along the countryside and check out the bridge. Of course, it's just a bridge So I got out of my car, crossed it on foot, took a few pictures, and we were on our way. From there, we drove south, almost across the municipality of Corozal, to a place called Montechoca State Park. However, it's not a state park like you would imagine it in the United States. It's simply an area where the government has set aside some land for conservation purposes. To start, it was closed. Furthermore, we couldn't see any recreational facilities. So it's basically land. Lots of land. I must add, however, that Corozal has some of the nicest countryside that I've seen in Puerto Rico. The place is simply gorgeous, and the view of the north coast on a clear day must be stunning. And I do say must be, because during our visit, there was this thick haze in the atmosphere that hardly let us define the horizon. So we drove along the Montechoca area as we found our way back along the Naranjito and Bayamón countryside. By 10.30 a.m., we were back on Toll Road 22 on our way back to the San Juan Metroplex. So what can I say about Corozal? Is it nice? You bet it is. 
Does it warrant a full day's visit? Not at all. It is, however, a great town to visit on your way to Barranquitas or Orocovis. Maybe you could even throw in Toalta or Toa Baja for good measure. Most of these are smaller towns that have a few good attractions each. But when you bundle them together, you get a great taste of what country living is really like in Puerto Rico. And speaking of food, the culinary delights that you'll find in this area are also amazing. So don't hesitate to stop at the mom and pop restaurants along the way. In our case, we weren't there for the food. We were there to cover the town, and before noon, we were already back home. See you next time.